Coming to you live from our top secret broadcasting bunker, hidden deep within the Siberian wilderness. This is Pastor Mike, and I'm coming to you live, and I am online, and I made it here literally in the nick of time. Those of you who are sort of patrolling the Internet, um, when I push the button at uh, 1245 p.m. Central Time, I literally ran in the front door of the church, ran up the stairs to the top secret broadcasting bunker, and hit the button. Uh, I just came in. We were uh, Gary and I were about uh, 40 miles south of here uh, at a funeral service. Um, another one. Uh, this not in my family, but uh, a woman in our church, uh, an elderly woman in our church, a dear saint, uh, her granddaughter. Uh, 18 years old, took her own life, and um, what a what a tragedy, what a tragedy that was. Um, and so we, I mean, we we left and uh, <clears throat> we drove. I drove and got here just in time. And I'm still trying to put my head together on everything. I've got some things I want to share with you. Um, I'm going to go to Drudge Report right off the bat because there was something that came up on Drudge Report. I mean, it must have just happened because I didn't see this this morning. Um, but before I let me let me do this. I always like to bring the scriptures in on the scene. I love the Bible. I love what the Bible says. Um, in fact, uh, let me just uh, you see the the uh, email address on the bottom of the screen here. If you'd like to get in touch with me during this broadcast, that email address is your only hope. Okay, I don't even have my iPad up here. I'm not on Skype today. Um, I mean, I just I just flew in. I mean, I literally just flew in and landed here in this seat. Um, and so if you want to get in touch with me during this broadcast, online at gmail.com is the way to do it. I'm not even on Watchman Community. I don't have half of I, I like to come up here at least 30 minutes ahead of time and relax and settle down. I called ahead of time, and Alicia made me a sandwich and had it sitting here, but I haven't had a chance to finish it yet. So anyway, let me, um, let me direct your attention before we do anything else. Let me direct your attention to Psalm chapter 2 because this is going to be the theme of some things that I am going to deal with. We have a video to show you, a video clip to show you that I just saw it just before I started talking here. I saw just about four or five minutes of it. That's all I want to see. It makes me mad. And several of, several of you have written into me this week concerning this particular video, and you were as astonished and amazed and disgusted as I am. It makes me mad is what it does. Uh, but I want to direct your attention to Psalm chapter 2 uh, because I believe in conspiracies. I, believe, I don't believe in conspiracy theories. I believe in conspiracy fact. I think I made somebody mad the other day when they called me <clears throat> and asked me, um, do I believe in chemtrails? And uh, I said, I'm waiting for the evidence to show up, uh, not just somebody's website. Don't, don't direct me to somebody's website that talks about chemtrails. Um, I don't believe everything that everybody says is a conspiracy on the Internet. It is my job to be skeptical. It's my job to be cautious, but it's my job to be skeptical. Uh, a, a poem that I learned in seventh grade at Twin City Christian Academy. I went to a Christian school for a year and a half. And um, if I wasn't in the office once a week getting a paddling, it's because I was sick that week. Um, they whooped it out of me. They sure did. But I remember we were using the Abeka program uh, from Pensacola College, and uh, they made us memorize a poem of a boy employed to guard the sheep, despised his work. He liked to sleep. And when a lamb was lost, he'd shout, wolf, wolf, the wolves are all about. The neighbors searched from noon till nine, but of the beast there was no sign. Yet wolf, he cried next morning when the neighbors came out again. One evening around six o'clock, a real wolf fell on the flock. Wolf, yelled the boy, a wolf indeed. But no one paid him any heed. And though he screamed to wake the dead, he's fooled us every time, they said, and let the hungry wolf enjoy his feast of mutton, lamb, and boy. The moral's this, the man who's wise will not defend himself with lies. Liars are not believed, forsooth. Even when liars tell the truth. 
And so I believe that I, and it amazes me, when I was 13 years old, I memorized that poem. I haven't forgot it since then. Um, <clears throat> I have a responsibility to, if I see the truth, to declare the truth. I have a, an also a responsibility not to sound a false warning. I dealt with this uh, last week con con concerning the Five Doves website. And um, I think the guy's name is Reese, Ron Reese or something like that, Grease or something, I don't know, that sent out this email saying that January 28th was the date of the rapture. <clears throat> I then get another email sent to me last night upon which I responded with scripture. And um, it's another email basically saying, okay, here's the real deal about January 28th. I really wasn't wrong. It's just that this was blah, 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 blah. And then he goes on with some other stuff that I didn't even bother read. And I, I wrote him, whoever this is, <clears throat> a very simple email and simply said, I'm not inclined to believe you and you're not allowed to change your prophecy after you make it. And then I quoted Deuteronomy chapter 18 about the rules concerning whether or not we should listen to a prophet. A prophet is never wrong, ever. If a prophet is wrong one time, and then we don't have to listen to him anymore. Now, I am not a prophet. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, all the prophets are recorded for us in the scriptures. And I believe them. Um, <clears throat> but I have a responsibility to declare what is in the Bible. And, and I try to, as much as within me is, to try to tell you what is in this Bible. Am I right on everything that I personally say? No. Am I right on everything that God says? How can I be wrong when I say what God says? And so, do I believe in conspiracies? Absolutely. But not because some slick willy out there made a YouTube video about something that he's making stuff up. Um, I don't know if he's telling the truth or not. But I believe what the Bible says, and I believe in conspiracies, <clears throat> and I'm going to talk about a couple of them today. One of them, they're just manifest right in front of our very eyes today. So I'll be in Psalm chapter 2. I know for a fact I'm going to go to um, Isaiah 14, and I'm going to go to Ezekiel 28. There's your conspiracies right there, and there's more there. But there's conspiracy facts all through the Bible. And so let me just open up my can of King James here. Let me put my markers in the right place. <clears throat> and then I'll start reading. Psalm chapter 2. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? I want you to think of this word imagine. I want you to imagine the word imagine. Uh, because in next week's Watchmen broadcast, I will be talking about uh, Rick Warren promoting imaginary Christianity. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, Rick Warren has given me the final notice that he, in fact, is a false prophet. And the Bible says he's twice dead. And um, I, I, I have the proof is what I have. So we're going to be talking about imaginations next week. Why, and, and Madonna. I'm not going to forget Madonna. Don't worry about it. Okay? 75, no, 76 people sent me an email. To, Pastor Mike, did you see Madonna? Uh, yeah, I did, and uh, I have some interesting things, and uh, I, I'm prom I promise you I won't regurgitate what everybody else has said on the Internet about Madonna. I think I have some fresh things to share with you concerning Madonna. I was going to give some of that today, but I just, I mean, literally, I, had, I didn't have time to bring my notes up here. And so anyway, uh, I'll be talking about that next week. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth. Here it is right here. If you believe, if you believe the Bible, then this stuff is simple. Okay? Why do the kings, the, the kings of the earth, and I want you to think about this because I got a video that some of you sent me concerning a king. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. Stop right here. That is a conspiracy. Okay? That's the definition of a conspiracy right there. More than one person involved. You see, when JFK was assassinated, which by the way, there is a uh, there's a new book coming out. 
Um, I saw the details of it yesterday. There's a new book coming out about JFK written by a former mistress. We all suspected that this stuff was going on. And now a former mistress of him, who was, no, who was nothing but a 19-year-old girl, who got a job a, because of her family connection. She got a job working in the White House. And according, I haven't read the book yet, but according to what has come out in the press, she not only talks about a, a long-standing affair that, that went on with JFK in the White House and other places, uh, but also being sort of like a call girl to anybody that JFK brought in. Um, and let me just add this, okay? That was 1960s. That was back really before the sexual revolution. Um, does it take, is, is it a stretch of our imagination, which you really shouldn't think about this too much, is it a stretch of our imagination to realize how much of um, how much harlotry and fornication goes on in the confines of Washington, D.C., the Capitol building, United States senators, congressmen, the president himself, uh, probably judges. Is it a stretch of our imagination to assume that this goes on? This is almost like business as usual. Um, <clears throat> you remember the D.C. madam who swore, swore on Alex Jones' show that she was not going to commit suicide, and if they found her body somewhere, she didn't do it. And then the next week, they find her hanging with one sleeve rolled up, one sleeve down, and I'm going, I've seen that picture before. Uh, she not only had the names and address and telephone numbers of everybody that all of her employees uh, took advantage of, um, many of them were high-ranking people, including a phone number that was linked to a house that was owned by Dick Cheney. Okay? So I can imagine a lot of this stuff goes on. And so anyway, <clears throat> a conspiracy. Uh, a, a conspiracy around JFK would mean that there was more than just Lee Harvey Oswald. Um, I know that there was, okay? I, there was a conspiracy. There is no doubt in my mind whatsoever that there was a conspiracy concerning the assassination of JFK. It involved spirits, and I have what I believe is evidence of that. Um, but that's the nature of a conspiracy. You have more than one person involved in it. You have all of these people gathered together, okay? And they're and they're taking counsel against the Lord and against his anointed. Now, I want you to think of everything that God anoints and God blesses. Uh, number one, we know that his son is the anointed. We know that all of those who are in Christ as born-again Christians, they also are anointed. Okay, not, not that we're on the level with God the way uh, Kenneth Copeland uh, talks about and, and so on. But we are in Christ. We, we have received the baptism, the inward baptism of the Holy Spirit in us. Um, I believe the Bible is anointed. I believe that marriage is anointed by God. I mean, that's what we do when we have a marriage. We don't just say, yeah, you guys just go ahead and shack up. It's okay. No, we have a ceremony where we ask for God's favor and God's blessing upon a particular marriage between a man and a woman. And so uh, I think it's okay biblically to expand this just a little bit to, to imply all the things that God blesses. And there are things that God will bless and things that God will not bless. I don't care how much religious wrapping you put into it. And I'll show you a video of that here in a little bit. But the conspiracy is against the Lord and against his anointed. So it's against, number one, the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Number two, it's against the King James Bible. Number three, it's against marriage. It's against salvation. It's against the true gospel. That's the conspiracy. And they're, what they want to do is, is uh, listed in verse three, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. People do not like the binding of God. They don't like the Ten Commandments, which binds people. They don't like the law.